Hey everybody, I'm Hannah Chalker. You're watching Roll Title, the Alabama Championship Special. Earlier today, my co-host Mike Johnson was in Tuscaloosa. We brought you the parade live. Now we have the National Championship celebration and trophy presentation for you. This is not an exactly live presentation of this. This is a little bit on of a delay, but we do have the the uh, ceremony in, in full for you guys. So let's uh, head on over to Tuscaloosa and check in with my buddy, Chris Stewart, who is emceeing it. We will also hear from the captains, Coach Saban, and those 2017 captains are Bradley Bozeman, Rashawn Evans, Minka Fitzpatrick, Sean Dion Hamilton. They will do the coaches' trophy presentation, the national championship presentation. You'll also hear for some uh, special guests there in Tuscaloosa. All right, let's head on over to the north end zone of outright outside Bryant Denny Stadium where fans are packed out. There's like 100,000 fans there, Mike Johnson said earlier, and uh, we're going to bring it to you. We're going to bring it to you there. That's the athletic director, Greg Byrne, and um, here you go, guys. Enjoy. We'll be back. Mike Johnson and I will be back after the ceremony to recap the day. Joining us next at the podium is Judge Terry Alarcon. He's the former president of the All-State Sugar Bowl, and he has a very special presentation to make. Judge? Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to be here. I'm an alumnus of the school and a former president, and I deeply appreciate this opportunity. This year marked the 16th appearance by the Crimson Tide in the Sugar Bowl. And while that number is significant, what is most significant to the Sugar Bowl is the memories that you've given us and to our tradition and our history. There's probably a few of you in the audience that may remember some of these memories. The 79 gold line stand against Penn State, the, the 1993 victory uh, against Miami, and obviously this convincing victory this year against Clemson. No university means more to the All-State Sugar Bowl than the University of Alabama, and that's the message I was sent here to deliver. We're very grateful for the opportunity you've given us to become one of the premier bowls in the country, and we'll be forever grateful for our relationship. And with that thought in mind, I have the distinct pleasure of presenting this Sugar Bowl trophy, and I can promise you I didn't spend enough time in the weight room to lift this up, so I'm going to ask Coach Saban to step up and accept the trophy on behalf of the administration of the University of Alabama, his remarkable coaching staff, this incredible football team, and you, this magnificent fan base. Coach. Thank you, Judge. At this time, please welcome Gary Darnell. He's the Associate Executive Director of the American Football Coaches Association. Coach. On behalf of Todd Berry, the Director of the American Football Coaches Association, we join the Crimson Tide in yet another tremendous year of seeing yet another national championship come to Tuscaloosa and the great state of Alabama. The FCA represents football coaches from youth to the NFL since 1922. One of our obligations is to f have formed a board comprised of 63 active football coaches in a cooperative manner with the CFP to select who is the best college football team in the United States. That process seems to have gotten very comfortable with traveling to Tuscaloosa. The success and excellence portrayed by Coach Saban and his teams has not been matched, nor will they be matched anytime soon. With me today is Heath Tilly, the Vice President of Amway America Supply Chain and presenting sponsor of the Coach's Trophy. Now, I got an interesting note from someone. I have a note here from Waterford Crystal, and it reads, Waterford Crystal, Waterford, Ireland, the maker of the Crystal Ball Trophy, and it reads, Mr. Darnell, if you run into Mr. Saban, please tell him we have enjoyed making the six crystal balls his teams have won. He, he says, 
Tell him we appreciate his business. <laughs> and then they added a PS, they added a PS. Tell him we are ready to start production on the 7th. <laughs> so today, today we present the Coach's Trophy Crystal Ball to the 2017 National Football Champions, Alabama. The, cri the Crystal Ball has been presented for 31 years since 1986. It is truly a special award for special people who do special things. Coach Saban, please accept the trophy on behalf of the football coaches, players, all football programs, Amway teams, and the truly, and the truly great Alabama fans and all fans of all great sports. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Coach. I do. I do. The most pressure-packed assignment of the entire day, right there. Well, they're a part of pretty something pretty special. Um, just want to thank all of y'all for making this so special. This. Hey everybody, we will come right back to the um, trophy ceremony and the national championship celebration. We have to make a few edits in the video because we've had a few technical difficulties today. You just saw Alabama receive their coaches trophy. They also get the Sugar Bowl trophy, the national championship trophy. We'll see that here in just a minute. You'll hear from Nick Saban a little bit later on. We'll also hear from the team captains. Once again, that is Bradley Bozeman, Rashawn Evans, Mika Fitzpatrick, and Sean Dion Hamilton. And Mike Johnson and I will be back on after the ceremony in full to recap the day. That's going to be fun. Mike has been reporting from Tuscaloosa all day long. If you want to go check out Roll Title Part 1 of 2, that is the live feed of the parade. All right, back to the ceremony action. It's a line in our great fight song. Says Bama's pluck and grit have rid her name in crimson flame. Nobody of the crimson tide more so than our next captain, senior linebacker Sean Dion Hamilton. Man, what a what a crowd! Um. It's just so amazing seeing all these Crimson Tide fans, you know, coming out and, and showing their support. Um, y'all are the best fans in the world, and, you know, we thank y'all for that. You know, this season's been a rocky season, you know, with all the injuries that we've had. But, you know, as a team, you know, we came together, and, you know, we, we accomplished our goals. So, you know, thanks to the coaching staff, uh, training staff, the academic staff, you know, thank y'all for all y'all support. And, you know, coming, come, coming from a recruit perspective, I mean, you know, I came here because – you know, I wanted to play football at the highest level, compete for a national championship and get my degree. And, you know, I'm proud to say that, you know, I'm a two-time national champion, three-time SEC champion, and I got my degree, and I'm finishing my master's degree in, in May, so. But last but not least, Roll Tide. And now please welcome first team All-American, winner of the Bednarik Award and Thorpe Awards, junior defensive back, Minka Fitzpatrick. Oh man, <laughs> these last two and a half years, three years have been a whole lot of fun. Um, I really appreciate all the support from y'all, the fans, and everybody that's out here today. Uh, y'all really mean a lot to me, and y'all have a place in my heart forever. And uh, me and my family, uh, we come a long way. Uh, Coach Saban, like uh, Razor said, he just gave us the blueprint to how to be a great man on and off the field. 
And uh, me and my family, again, is just extremely grateful for a man like him coming into our life. And uh, university, uh, um, uh, I, loved, I loved this place, I love the campus, I love the relationship that I formed here. And uh, you know, I want to thank God also for, for everything that he's done for not just myself, but for my family, for my team, and everything that he's allowed us to, to get through. And um, you know, I, I just want to say thank you to everybody here. Thank you to my family, to the fans, to the coaches, to the training staff, whoever. And also shout out to the person right there, 821 miles. That's a, <laughs> that's a nice little trip. So you know, no matter where you go, you're not gonna get fans like that. And, and we just, we really appreciate everything that you've done for us and our support. And God bless and roll tide. Got a little task for the captains here in just a moment. But right now, please welcome to the microphone a gentleman under whose leadership the Southeastern Conference has continued to excel and raise the bar as America's Conference of Champions. Please welcome Commissioner Greg Sankey. Thank you, Chris. We have a, uh, an advertising slogan. It just means more. And my friends and colleagues ask me, well, what do you mean it just means more? So for the photographers up here in front, if you will take a picture of the fans here today, you are what means, what, what makes it mean more. Your passion, your interest, your commitment is important to all of us in the Southeastern Conference. Monday, January 8th was a remarkable day. I'll stop and you can chant. Uh, we'll make a new ad out of it. That chant was in the Sugar Bowl after your competitor, the University of Georgia, captured the Rose Bowl victory. That chant was in Atlanta and Mercedes-Benz Stadium as two teams played in a remarkable evening for the national championship, the second time since 2011. That's happened both times. It's been the SEC, in fact, the SEC remarkably is the only conference to have that happen in the modern era. What's even more remarkable is standing here today, what's been accomplished by these young men, these coaches, your head coach behind me, is more difficult than it's ever been. Remember, our two teams were the underdogs in the semifinal games. They overcame the expectations and earned their way to that championship game in Atlanta. But you've also heard a theme today that I think is really important for us to stop and consider. I didn't see the championship presentation in Atlanta because I was standing behind Bradley Bozeman, who should be named Mount Bozeman. And I couldn't see on the front of his uniform Beneath the SEC logo, it says graduate. Sean Dion has one of those as well. In fact, there are 27 young men who played that night, who are participating on that team, who have earned their degrees at the University of Alabama. You know, there were 13 from the University of Georgia. We had 40 young men who'd done exactly what we hoped, played at the highest level of competition, and earned their degrees from two great universities. Thank you, Coach Saban, for your emphasis beyond just the high level of expectation in football. And I think thank you to Miss Terry as well, because I know she's in there as part of that team. Thank you, President Bell, Greg Byrne, for the support you provide, and for those across this campus who make those educational moments, that achievement of graduation, a reality. We're here on a university campus because those educational achievements just mean more. But there's a guy behind me who once said this, when people have success, one of two things happen. They either get really satisfied and want to keep thinking about it, talking about what they did, or the success becomes a little addictive and it makes them want to keep having more. Enjoy today, enjoy the moment, but remember this, the 2018 college football season is 212 days away. The SEC championship game is 305 days away. And the college football playoff national championship is just 342 days from today. It means everybody's trying to climb that mountain. 
Congratulations, enjoy this success, and keep up the great achievements. Fans, we ask that you now please turn your attention to the Nick Saban statue in the Walk of Champions. This year's captains are present to unveil the 2017 National Championship marker. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause as we unveil this new mark in Alabama football history. Now, please. Awesome stuff from Tuscaloosa. Next time you guys are in town, you're going to have to go over to the Nick Saban statue, which of course is right next to the Bear Bryant statue, and check out the 2017 etched next to the 2015 um, right there uh, behind the Nick Saban statue there in the cement. You guys, I've had a lot of questions and comments in the comment section about why we have 2015 on our helmet. Well, send us a sticker. Somebody send us the, the 17 sticker and we'll put it on this helmet because we need this helmet if you guys watch SEC Country Live every weekday besides Fridays on SEC Country at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. You'll see this helmet and we need, uh, we need a 17 sticker on there, so we'll work on that for you guys. A few programming notes before we bring on Mike Johnson to recap the day. He's been there all day long. He got to talk to fans. He got to talk to some of our SEC correspondents. Um, we'll see what he thought about the today. He uh, even reported from the parade live in the roll title part one of two. So you can go check out the parade video as well. But some programming notes. So here on SEC Country Alabama page, we're going to have a lot of cool stuff coming up. So Chris Kirshner and I, he is the Alabama recruiting reporter, have an Alabama recruiting show. Okay, Every Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Time, we'll be live right back here on the Alabama page breaking down everything leading up to National Signing Day on Wednesday, February 7th. Hey, and there's some really cool stuff this weekend happening in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Saban is hosting some top, top recruits. Final push before signing day, including four-star linebacker Quay Walker. He uh, from Georgia, Chris County High School. That's a, that's a big get for Alabama. We saw what happened to the linebackers this past season and injuries. And this is a big time recruit, guys. Tennessee and UGA are heavily after this guy, and it's believed that it's between all three of those schools pretty evenly. This is a big, big time visit this weekend for Quay Walker, and you're going to want to head on over to SEC Country page for updates on that. All right, my buddy and co-host, Mike Johnson, who has been in Tuscaloosa all day long. We're going to get his thoughts on today. You guys send in your questions and comments here on the Facebook Live section. Mike, how's it been? How was the uh, parade and how was the ceremony? What are your thoughts from today? Uh, just uh, an incredible day and as you can see behind me things have already uh, started to clear out a little bit but uh, just an incredible atmosphere I thought the the crowd here was just alive and Nick Saban pointed to it a few times uh, as he addressed the crowd that you know he felt like Alabama fans were the best fans in college football and uh, I have to agree with him after seeing the show out today it just it was a great day the weather turned out to be great uh, you heard that in the, in the words from Greg Sankey the SEC Commissioner Bill Hancock uh, also gave up and gave a few words a lot of talk about the graduates that were part of both the Alabama program and the Georgia program in the national title game. I thought that everybody did a great job in their speeches and of course the unveiling of the 2017 symbol right behind Nick Saban's uh, statue right here at the Walk of Champions. Just an incredible day top to bottom. I, you know, I think everybody's just still kind of soaking it all in and just uh, trying to figure out what they just saw. Mike, everyone here in the comment section is jealous. They all want to be at the parade. We've had some people say they're never missing another parade. They're going to be at next year's national championship parade. Thoughts on the tide back in the title game next year. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty good odds. I think when you look at, obviously, the fact that there were so many true freshmen playing on this team this year, this was a team that a lot of people, and actually some, some national writers wrote throughout the year that maybe this wasn't one of Nick Saban's more talented teams. Maybe this was uh, you know, just a Nick Saban coaching job that gets this team in the winner's circle at the end. I think when you look at the young talent returning, and you obviously saw it there in the second half of the national title game, guys like Devontae Smith, guys like Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, uh, Najee Harris, and obviously 
Tua Tonga Vailoa, along with Alex Leatherwood and Jedrick Wills, and a lot of freshmen seeing a ton of playing time this game. I think that Alabama obviously has to retool the secondary. You have some holes to fill on defense from some of the guys that have left early and headed into the NFL draft, but I know Nick Saban can get it done. He's recruited so well over the last few years that this, uh, this Bama team in 2018 is going to be as good as anybody. What was Nick Saban's message? I know we all just watched the ceremony, but for those just joining us, what was Nick Saban's message? What did he say? Yeah, he delivered a great message about overcoming adversity, and I think that was really the tone of his message. He, he kind of talked about how society as a whole could learn something from the way this team bounced back at halftime to be able to come back and win that game. It didn't just take one player. There wasn't one uh, person or player or individual personality that took over the game. It took everybody. It took uh, the two deep, really, at every position, including offensive line, including the quarterback position, and uh, that really was the central theme of his address today, was really talking about how this team was able to overcome so many obstacles and that he felt like this fan base and people as a whole could really learn something from it. Were you able to go up there and see the trophies, maybe give it a little like rub of good luck, a little kiss on the side of the gold <laughs> championship trophy mic? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I saw uh, the crystal football uh, from a few years ago, and I saw, obviously, the college football playoff trophy up there. I think everybody was trying to get as close as they could to it. I'm going to try to circle back around. I didn't really get that close this time around, but the trophies are all still up there, and obviously, uh, you know, they'll be on the showcase uh, circuit throughout the state of Alabama uh, for the coming weeks. And so I didn't get a chance to get close to the trophies today, uh, but I'll try to make my way to get back up to that college football playoff trophy sometime in the near future for sure. Mike, you've done such an awesome job today making your correspondent debut here on SEC Country World Title. What's been your favorite part of today? <laughs> Really just talking to the fans. I, I think that's been the, one of the most awesome parts. And, you know, you, you see a camera and you see a microphone, and obviously everybody's wearing crimson. Uh, but like I said earlier, you get to see the ring shimmer a little bit, and everybody starts noticing. I've had a ton of people walk up to me and say, man, you were one of my favorite players. Uh, you know, that 2009 team was one of my favorite teams. Obviously getting a chance to scroll through the Walk of Champions, to scroll through uh, Denny Chimes and see uh, my old handprints on the sidewalk, my name in the concrete all over campus. And uh, it has been a special day. You know, it, it's, it's special in its own right when you do it as a player, but to come back here and be able to enjoy it from this side of things, talking to the microphone and, and kind of interact with everybody uh, through Facebook and through throughout SEC country. Is, uh, it's been a great day for sure. I know we had a few difficulties getting the ceremony on, but we finally got to broadcast it in full. Any other messages or any other speeches that stuck out to you? Yeah, I thought Rashawn Evans delivered a great speech earlier today. He, you know, he pretty much stepped up to the podium. The first thing he said was he wanted to thank, thank the fans, that the fans really had made uh, this college football experience for him really special. I thought Bradley Bozeman uh, also, you know, kind of reiterated some of the same words that really the fans and the passion that you see from Alabama football fans. And, you know, you would think five national championships in nine years that fans might stop showing up to events like this. But, I mean, there were hundreds of thousands of people out here today in Tuscaloosa at the Walk of Champions. People just coming in from all over the state of Alabama, making five-hour drives just to get here this morning and be a part of this and, and see this team up close and in person. It's what makes somewhere like Alabama and the university here in Tuscaloosa a special place for sure. Earlier today when the parade was broadcasting, you'd said you didn't get to have a parade in 2009 when you were on the national championship team. You were a team captain then as well as an All-American. <laughs> what was being there involved in a national championship parade like? I mean, you should have been right in front just marching with the Million Dollar Band. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think this was a little bit of a glorified parade. This was an abbreviated parade. You know, I think that when you talk to some of the fans today, actually talk to some people that were actually here in 92 for the parade, and they start downtown, and you do, you know, two miles of parade, and you wave to the fans. This parade started and went about, uh, you know, a quarter of a mile from Denny Chimes down to the Walk of Champions. It was basically just a long walk or a long ride for a lot of these players to get around the corner and get to the stadium. So it was special to be up close to it today and be able to see it. It's not something we got to do in 2009. The weather was so bad, the planning wasn't there, but you could tell the players really enjoyed this today. And I think the recruits did as well. It's another special part of what was going on today that you really get to showcase the University of Alabama and its fans and, the you know, how good this football team has been. That the recruits 
kids get to show up and see things like this. I saw Tua Tagovailoa's family. I saw his little brother, who was also a highly regarded quarterback prospect. He was taking it in front and center, people getting pictures with him. And so I think it's just kind of a snowball effect that when you talk to these players and being a part of a special ceremony like this, that, you know, it just kind of breeds more special moments down the road. Mike, I want to take one viewer comment before we get off air here. Will Miller says, I hope my Colts pick, pick Mika Fitzpatrick with the third pick in the NFL draft. Of course, a lot of those players that spoke today, including Mika Fitzpatrick, are going on to the NFL. You went through that process. You left Alabama, went on to the NFL. What's that going to be like for them? Well, listen, you, what you have to understand for these players, and if, I, if I'm talking to these players right now, you have the best of everything here at the University of Alabama. You have Scott Cochran. He's the best strength coach in the country. Nick Saban's the best coach in the country. Uh, you, you have nutrition. You have uh, all these assets at your fingertips. Don't turn away from what has made you successful. That's the message I wish I could give these young guys up and coming. Continue to do the same things that have got you where you're at. Just because you get a payday uh, when NFL draft rolls around doesn't mean you can slack off. I think that's the biggest message out here for some of these guys. A guy like Mika Fitzpatrick, very naturally talented, but he's put in a ton of hard work. You got to try to keep that going if you're some of these guys. Bradley Bozeman, I look at a guy like Rashawn Evans. Ronnie Harrison's another guy that's coming out in the draft. Bo Scarborough. These guys are at the peak of their form physically. You have to try to keep that going into the next level. And uh, it starts with some guys going to the Senior Bowl. Obviously, it starts in a ton of this draft prep and at the Combine. Uh, but when you get to that next level, don't forget what exactly made you good here at Alabama. And I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that this senior class will be able to do those things. Mike, what an awesome message, and thank you so much. You killed it today. You were an awesome correspondent, awesome reporter there from Tuscaloosa. Thank you so much for all of your hard work getting us those interviews, uh, reporting back to us, reporting live. I know all of our viewers here appreciate you, Mike. Thanks so much. <laughs> it's been a ton of fun today, and I can't tell you. Uh, thanks for all the viewers out there who have been watching today and following along. Uh, I'm going to go uh, get my party on and my own little national championship celebration. I know everybody back in Atlanta will be doing the same thing. All right, Mike, head on down to the Strip. We're, we're stuck here in the studio in Atlanta, so uh, no partying. No partying for me today. All right, my was Mike Johnson, everybody, the uh, 2009 on the national championship team. He was also a former All-American. Amazing to have him in Tuscaloosa reporting for us today. And a few notes, this show, as well as the live parade broadcast, are going to be on demand here on the Alabama SEC Country video page. Uh, Mark Burnett was also there, our SEC Country reporter. There's a lot of different clips and videos from the parade. We'll have the interviews in full from Mark Burnett and uh, Ryan Fowler as well. And we've got a few other things. Maybe some surprises in uh, the video pages as well. Of course, coming up next Monday, Chris Kirshner and I will be live right back here on this page for the Alabama Recruiting Show, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central Time. And also, don't forget on SEC Country Alabama page, we have so much recruiting information. Only a few more weeks leading up to National Signing Day on February 7th. That's a Wednesday. And some big-time news could be coming out of Tuscaloosa this weekend. Quay Walker, four-star linebacker who is right now in the fight between Tennessee, Georgia and Alabama. He's visiting Tuscaloosa this weekend. He's looking to make his decision on National Signing Day, but Chris Kirshner is our great reporter. He could be getting some more information before then. All right, guys, thank you so much for bearing with us today through the different technology issues. We're so glad we finally got the ceremony broadcasted to you as well as the parade. And if you miss anything, as soon as we get off live here, um, scroll on back and you can watch it again. It'll be there for eternity. All right, guys, this is Roll Title, the Alabama National Championship Special. And uh, roll tide, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.